Hello everybody and welcome. As you know, this is my fanless nest, but I'm having now some problems, yeah? Summer is being hotter than I expected and my thermal design is great, but it was made for SSDs. They were very expensive when I was building these and I'm planning to get them only now in December. So what's happening is now the system is overheating. So I need to take care of this, otherwise these hard drives are already operating above the specified temperature and the CPU is heating the thermal ceiling with very little activity, right? When in general, in my setup, it stays like 10 degrees below. The router is fine. The, the sock that is here is rated for 95 degrees and it's running at 70. And the switch, I have no idea, but it's not complaining yet. And here's the situation inside, yeah? So I have there the big heat sink, but that's not handling the load. Now the power supply is fine. And I have already some fans here, but they are not connected. And my reference temperature here, it usually stays at 32 degrees during normal, like winter and spring. But now we are stuck at 39 and this thermometer is just somewhere here behind this clock. My intention remains that the system remains completely silent, but with this fan controller here, I'm gonna give myself the option to stuff the fence in case of especially hot summer or I don't know, in case I'm absent for a while, you know, let's imagine I go for a trip. Then I don't need really the computer to be silent, yeah, so I can just keep running the computer with the fans on. So I don't have any issues when I'm absent, yeah. If this is overheat and I'm here, I can intervene like today. But in general, you know, I may travel one day after COVID. So I chose the only option I found. This is gonna go on the drive bay. You have like six, three or four pin PWM fan controllers and they are fed by one four pin connector. So it's gonna fit very nicely on the front bay of my NAS. Plus the LEDs are blue, which means they're gonna match the color scheme of my NAS with the blue LEDs for the hard drive bays and the clock. To cool the CPU, I'm gonna use this huge knot tool that I found. And what I'm gonna do is hang it from the top of the chassis, blowing on top of the heat sink, but also cooling down all the other components. I think it's gonna work out well without any excessive extra noise. And this extremely <laughs> overkill packaging. So we have a description of the features here, blah, 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 all the geometrical features of the fan surfaces that uh, make the air move quieter. The fan is huge and I do intend to run it on the lowest RPM possible and then monitor basically the thermals. On the back here you have more subtitles, some technical specifications, so acoustic levels, this should be maximum 19 decibel which is nothing special if the you know, if the windows are open, there is noise on the street. Here, again, more super mega features, super anti-ecological box. I thought of buying by all Noct Noctua, but since this is an exceptional situation, I will just use the fans that came with my chassis. They are not the quietest, but they will do the job. To help it, I got here four anti-vibration pads, so for four fans, and they should make it be a bit quieter, and they should work on non noctua fans as well, so I guess the noise levels are not going to change very much from the spinning discs, and at the end of the year when I have the SSDs on, I should not have problems anymore with heat, and we'll be good to go. As you can see, the green LEDs here is beeping and this LED is only for the system disks, not for the NAS disks, yeah, attached to the storage. I'm taking the opportunity here, I'm taking, I'm taking the opportunity to upgrade my free NAS installation. 
Our first step is to remove this bar here that keeps the chassis structure solid. Now remove this structure here, kind of, kind of a cage, to install the fan controller. You can see here that I have just two screws here to keep the front plate in place. I remove both of them and install the fan controller in. This is how the um, fan controller looks like. It's a low quality piece of equipment, but it matches the color scheme of the chassis and it does the job, it was the only option available, so if you don't have any, you're happy with what you have, right? So I have connected the front panel to the drive bay of camera and it looks like this, yeah. There is enough cable clearance here on the back for me to be able to put this back in place and not really be screwing around too much with you know, the rest of the chassis. And now we can screw the drive bay back in. Wiring will be the last step, but you know, I will have the small X here connected to the last output here for my power supply. I have already Molex, a lot of Molex is connected, but they are feeding my hard drives and I shouldn't have any extra three Molexes at the moment. Yeah, they're all occupied. The last three one is actually driving that front LCD panel. I won't bury some Molex from anywhere. It's going to be the last step. Now I need to remove all my hard drive sledges. Remember the sequence of installation. And I need to expose the back of the, this bay to be able to unscrew the fans and install the anti-vibration pads that I got. And see, these are not really made for constant use. The construction quality is not phenomenal. So something to keep in mind. Yeah? It's only for hot swapping in case of need and not as a daily exercise. And yeah, the hard drives are quite hot. Funny that some of them slide out quite easily. Yeah. This is an empty bay. After seeing the size of the task, I've decided not to disassemble the front, you know, the drive base. And I will skip to the rear fence just because I'm gonna do a big overhaul for the server at the end of the year with the SSDs and you know this very nice emergency ventilation set so for now i will just install the dampening pads and they work like this yeah so you basically connect them here on the edge somehow i think and hope anyway they will sit flush uh, and i can just push them through yeah so they will basically sit between the screw and the chassis, right? And apply with the applied pressure, should reduce reduce vibration, and that's well, at least that's the plan. Yeah. The pads are not perfectly flush, but once I push the screws through, it should be good enough. Unfortunately, the 6 pin to Molex that I have here has 5, I think, 
out outlets like Molex outlets. So I need one more. I took it from the other power supply. So it goes here to the last six p port I have. And the other end will go to that fan controller. This is not a pretty setup, and I really deserve it. It will be properly sorted. Oh, I actually didn't need the extra cable because it has a pass through. So let's stick it out. The final molex here, and the molex goes somewhere. Stick it out. Stow it here. And pass through the fan controller. Beauty. Now we start connecting the fence. This one is coming from hard drives. So is this one. So I'll make them one and two. And I'll make the chassis fans on the back three and four. Five will go to the big chassis fan, and six for the future. So here's the plan. The fan will go somewhere like here, help hold the power supply in place, right? And it's huge and it can blow low RPM air on this uh, SAS card, plus the chipset down here and the big CPU fan. Of course, I need to have the power cable going out the right way. But it will be like this. And I will screw it to the to the chassis retainer here. Unfortunately, only one screw aligns. And I think it does not line any of the way, unfortunately. Uh, one screw should do. <laughs> and it has, it holds the power supply perfectly in place. I love it. I really, really love it. So here is the experiment, yeah, so I have the retainer that comes with the fan, I'll just push it through and then attach the fan from the other side. Let's see if it's, I think the hole is too tight now, it goes through. So, here we have it, it broke a little bit, but I should be able now to push the fan through here.